So here's our finished command line to-do list app, built using just core Python functions, loops, conditionals, and lists. As you can see, we've got a few different options on the screen, like we can add a task, view our tasks, mark something as done, delete a task, or just exit the program. So let's say I want to add a task. I'll choose option 1, and then it'll ask me to enter the task I want. I'll type something like, finish Python project, and boom, it gets added to our list. I can keep doing the same thing again. Pick option 1, add another task like, go for a walk, and keep going. Now to see all the tasks I've added, I just select option 2, and it'll show me the full list. Each task has a number next to it and a status symbol, a cross mark if it's not done yet, a checked mark if it is. Now, let's say I've completed one of these tasks, like go for a walk. I'll choose option 3, which is to mark something as done. It'll ask me for the task number. I'll enter 2 for the second task, and it tells me marked as done. Now, just to double check that, I'll go back and choose option 2 to view my tasks again. And now I can see that go for a walk has a checked mark instead of a cross, which means it's marked as completed. Now maybe I want to remove something I don't need anymore. Let's say the second task, go for a walk. I'll choose option 4, which is to delete a task and enter 2 as the task number. It deletes that task and confirms it. Again, I'll choose option 2 to view my current list. And now it only shows the remaining task. The second one is gone, just like we expected. And finally, once I'm done, I simply choose option 5 to exit the program, and it says goodbye. And once we're done building this basic version and you understand how everything works under the hood, we're going to take it one step further and build a GUI version of this to-do app with buttons, input fields, and a much cleaner visual layout. If that sounds exciting, drop a comment below and let me know if you want a full tutorial on the GUI version next. I'd love to hear what you think. Hey everyone, in today's video, we're going to build a simple yet powerful to-do list app using just basic Python. No fancy frameworks, no external libraries, just clean and beginner-friendly code. If you've just started learning Python, this project is a great way to practice core concepts like lists, dictionaries, functions, loops, and even a bit of error handling. All right, let's open up your Python editor, whether it's VS Code, PyCharm, or just a basic text editor, and create a new file. Let's name it to do. First up, we create an empty list called tasks. This list will hold all the tasks we add, and each task will be a dictionary with two keys, the task description and its status, whether it's done or not. Next, we define a function called showMenu. This will display the options for the user every time they run the program. Each number corresponds to an action, like adding a task, viewing all tasks, marking something as done, or deleting a task. All right, now let's create the function that will allow the user to add a new task to their to-do list. So right here, I'm going to define a function, and I'll call it addTask. So what this line does is define a new function using the death keyword, which stands for define. We're naming the function add task because, well, that's what it's going to do. It will handle the logic for adding a new task to our list. Notice those parentheses after the function name. Right now, they're empty because we're not passing any arguments into the function. And don't forget the colon at the end. That tells Python this is the start of a code block. Now, inside this function, we want to ask the user to type in the task they want to add. So here, I'm creating a variable called task. You can name this anything, but task is simple and makes sense for what we're storing. We're using the built-in input function to show a prompt to the user, in this case, the text enter task. When this line runs, the program will pause and wait for the user to type something and press enter. Whatever they type gets stored inside our task variable as a string. Now that we have the task from the user, we want to save it inside our tasks list. Remember, that's the list we created at the top of the program to hold all our to-do items. So we use tasks.append to add a new item to the end of the list. But here's something important. We're not just adding the raw text. We're actually adding a dictionary. Inside the dictionary, we define two key value pairs. First, task colon task. This means we're using the string task as a label and assigning the user's input as its value. Second, we add done colon false. This will help us track whether the task is completed or not. We set it to false by default because the task is new and hasn't been marked as done yet.
So, to summarize, every task in our list is going to be a dictionary with two pieces of information, the task name and whether it's done or not. And finally, we want to give the user some feedback so they know their task was saved. We use a print statement, and inside it, we use something called an f-string. That's just a way to embed variables directly into the text. By putting the variable task inside the curly braces, Python will insert whatever the user typed in. So, if the user typed buy groceries, this line would print task buy groceries added. So, just to quickly recap, we defined a function called add task, we took user input and saved it as a string, then we stored that string inside a list as part of a dictionary, and we printed a confirmation message to the user. This sets the foundation for how we'll manage and update tasks throughout the rest of the app. All right, we're going to define another function here, and this one's called view tasks. We use the def keyword just like before, which tells Python, hey, we're about to define a new function. This function won't take any input from the user directly. That's why the parentheses are empty, and it will be responsible for showing the list of tasks that the user has added so far. The very first thing we want to do inside this function is check if there are actually any tasks in the list. We do that using the condition if not tasks, and this is a cool Python trick. Basically, if the list of tasks is empty, this condition will be true. So, if there's nothing in the list, we simply print a message, no tasks yet, and then we return immediately using the return statement. That just tells Python to exit the function early, no point continuing if there's nothing to display. If there are tasks in the list, we move forward. Here, we print a heading just to visually separate the tasks from the rest of the program's output. Now comes the interesting part. We're going to loop through the list of tasks using a for loop. We're using enumerate here, which is a super useful Python function. It gives us two things on each loop. Index, the current index or position of the task in the list, and the task, the actual task itself. We also pass start equal to 1 to enumerate so that our numbering starts from 1 instead of 0. This just makes it friendlier for the user since most people don't count from 0 in real life. Inside the loop, we first figure out the status of the task. Is it done or not? Each task is a dictionary, remember, so we access the task done to check its completion status. If it's true, we set the status to a green checkmark emoji. If it's false, we show a red cross. We're using a ternary operator here. This whole line is just a compact way to say, if the task is done, show a checkmark, otherwise show a cross. And finally, we print each task in a nice numbered format. We use an F string again, so we can insert the index, the actual text text, and the status emoji all in one line. The end result is a neat, easy to read list of all the tasks, each one showing whether it's done or not. So that's the view tasks function. It checks if there are any tasks, and if there are, it neatly displays them along with their status, completed or not. It's super readable for the user, and it keeps our program interactive and organized. So far, users can add tasks and view their to-do list. But what happens when they actually finish a task? Well, now we'll build the part of the program that lets users mark a task as done. Just like before, we're defining a new function, and this one is named markDone. The name makes it obvious. This function will let users mark one of their tasks as complete. We use the def keyword followed by the function name, then empty parentheses since it doesn't take any parameters, and then the colon to start the function body. Now, the very first thing we do inside this function is called view tasks. Why? Because before asking the user which task they want to mark as done, we want to show them the list of tasks with their corresponding numbers so they can make a decision. Without this, they'd have to guess or remember the task number, which would be super confusing. So this makes the experience smooth and user-friendly. Now, right after showing the tasks, we do a quick check. If the task list is empty, we just exit the function early using return. This is important. Imagine someone chooses the mark as done option before even adding any tasks. We don't want the rest of the code to run if there's nothing to mark. So we check if not tasks, and if that's true, we stop right there. All right, now we get into the interactive part. We want to ask the user which task they want to mark as done. We use the input function to prompt them with the message, enter task number to mark done. But here's the key part. We also wrap it in int function because input always returns a string, and we want to convert it into an integer so we can use it as an index later.
We also subtract 1 from the number they entered, and this is really important. In Python, list indexes start at 0, but when we show the tasks to the user, we start numbering them from 1. So if the user picks task 1, we need to subtract 1 to get the correct index in the list, index 0. This entire line is inside a try block, and we'll talk about why in just a second. OK, now we've got the user's input stored in a variable called index. But before we go ahead and try to use it, we need to make absolutely sure that it's a valid number, one that actually points to a task in our list. So here, we're using a condition to check that. The first part, 0 is less than or equal to index, makes sure that the index isn't negative, because if someone accidentally types in a 0 or a negative 1, we don't want the program messing with the wrong item or crashing. And the second part, index less than length of tasks, makes sure they didn't enter a number too big, like 10, when we only have 3 tasks. Basically, this whole line is just saying, only move forward if the index is valid, if it points to a real task. If that check passes, then we're inside the if block. Here, we're marking the task as done by updating its dictionary. Remember earlier when we added the task, we stored it as a dictionary like this? Well, now we're flipping that done value from false to true. Right after that, we give the user a little confirmation that the task is updated. Now, here's the flip side. If the number the user entered doesn't pass our check, maybe they typed 100 or maybe they typed 0 when there are only two tasks, then we go into this else block. And all we do here is give a friendly little message. This helps the user know they messed up, but it's done in a polite, non-frustrating way. We're not crashing or throwing errors, just gently guiding them to try again with a better number. Alright, now let's talk about this final piece, the accept block. Earlier, when we use the input function, there's always a risk. The user might type in something that isn't a number at all. Like, what if they type hello instead of two, or just press enter without typing anything? Well, in those cases, Python will throw an error called a value error, because it tried to convert something non-numeric into an integer. So we wrap all of that inside a try block, and if something goes wrong, this accept value error catches it. And then we show this helpful message. So instead of crashing or freezing, the program just gently tells the user what went wrong and how to fix it. So the entire mark done function is all about letting the user mark a task as completed, but we do it in a really thoughtful and safe way. First, we show them the task list so they can see what's available. Then we ask them to pick a task using its number. We check if that number is valid. If it is, we update the task status to done. If it's not valid or they typed something weird, we help them out with clear, friendly messages. Alright, now let's add the ability to delete a task from our to-do list. Because, let's be honest, sometimes we add a task we don't need anymore, or maybe we just want to clean up our list, so we need a way to remove things. Let's create a function called delete task. So first, we're defining a new function, just like we've done before. We use the def keyword and we call the function delete task because, well, that's exactly what it's going to do. No parameters inside the parentheses because we're not passing anything in, and don't forget the colon at the end to start the function body. The very first thing we do inside this function is call view tasks. Why? Well, if the user is about to delete something, they need to see the list of tasks first, right? We want to display all the current tasks along with their numbers so the user knows which one to delete. We already wrote the view tasks function earlier and it shows all tasks, so now we're just reusing it here. Next, we're doing a quick check to see if there are any tasks at all. So this line is saying, if the task list is empty, meaning there's nothing to delete, just exit the function. We don't want to ask the user for a task number if there's nothing to delete. So if not tasks handles that case. And if that's true, we just return, meaning we stop running the function early. Simple and clean. All right, now we get into the interactive part of this function. We want to ask the user which task they want to delete. So we use the input function to prompt them with the message, enter task number to delete. But input always gives us a string, and we need a number so we can use it as an index in the list. That's why we wrap it inside an int function to convert it to an integer. And again, just like in the mark done function, we subtract one from the number they give us. Why? Because in the list we show them, tasks are numbered starting from one, but in Python, list indexes start from zero. So if the user wants to delete task one, the actual index is zero. 
We store that in a variable called index, and this line is inside a try block so we can safely handle any weird input. Now we check whether the index the user entered is actually valid. Same kind of check we used before. This just means the number isn't negative and it's within the range of actual tasks in our list. If the number is valid, we move ahead and delete the task. We use the pop index method to remove the item at that position in the list. This also returns the item that got removed, so we save it in a variable called removed. Why save it? So we can tell the user exactly which task we deleted. Then we print a message, that task is deleted. But if the index they entered is not valid, like they typed 9 when there are only two tasks, we go into this else block and we give them a gentle warning. And finally, we've got our accept block, which catches any bad input. Maybe the user typed a word instead of a number, like apple or hello, or left it blank. Python would normally freak out and throw an error. But because we wrap this whole thing in a try accept block, we're prepared. So we catch the value error and just print a helpful message. So the delete task function lets the user clean up their to-do list by removing a task they no longer want. We show them the list, ask them for the task number, validate the number, and then delete the task, all while handling any kind of bad input. And that brings us another step closer to a real-world usable app. Users can now add, view, mark, and delete tasks, a complete mini workflow. Okay, now let's set up the main loop that drives our whole app. We start with a wild true loop. Why true? because we want this loop to run forever, or at least until the user chooses to exit. This loop is the heart of our program. It's going to show the menu, ask the user what they want to do, and then call the right function. First thing inside the loop, we call our show menu function. Remember, we defined this earlier. This function simply prints out the options for the user, so every time this loop runs, the user sees their options again. It's clean and intuitive. Now we ask the user to make a choice. We use input to prompt them with, choose an option between 1 and 5. Whatever they type, we store it in a variable called choice. We're not converting it to an integer here, we're just going to work with the string directly. If the user entered 1, we call the add task function. This lets them add a new task to their to-do list. If they typed 2, we show them all the tasks by calling view tasks. Again, super simple and clean. If they typed 3, we want to let them mark a task as complete. So we call the mark done function, which we covered earlier. Option 4 means the user wants to delete a task, so we call the delete task. All of these conditions are checking the user's input and calling the appropriate function. Now, if the user chooses 5, that means they want to exit the app. So first, we print a friendly goodbye message, then we use the break statement to stop the while loop, which ends the entire program. And finally, this else block is our safety net. If the user enters anything other than 1 to 5, we give them a little reminder. Invalid choice, try again. This way, the app doesn't crash or behave unexpectedly. We're guiding the user to do the right thing. So, to sum it up, this loop is what keeps the app alive. It's like the control center of our to-do list. Every time through the loop, we show the menu, ask the user what they want to do, call the matching function, repeat until they choose to quit. And the best part? Because each part of our program is in its own function, everything is modular and easy to manage. This is a great structure for any beginner app, and it's the kind of pattern you'll use a lot in real-world coding, too. And that's it. We've just built a complete, functional to-do list app in Python, from scratch, step by step. You've learned how to take user input, manage a list of tasks, mark them as complete, delete them, and even handle errors gracefully, all using simple Python concepts. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow and reach more learners like you. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next video where we'll be taking this project to the next level and building a GUI version of the To-Do List app. And if you're excited for that or have any questions, feedback, or ideas, drop a comment below. I read all of them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.